Hey everyone, how's it going? Oh my gosh, thank you so much for waiting and welcome back to another stream here. Um, I have to admit, yes, a few of you in the chat guessed right. I was indeed shaking and st stressing out. But uh, yeah, that was, uh, that's, that's, that's just a usual boomerang move. I mean, what do you expect? I, I just, uh, no, I actually, we had some uh, last minute issues, but hopefully they've been fixed. So uh, if at any point the audio is doubling, please let us know. But um, in any case, hi chat, hi everyone. And uh, it's great to, great to be here. And I have a very special guest today. Um, just uh, so you know, all know Jasmine Choi, uh, just to say a little bit about her. You know, she's a superstar flutist, uh, tours all over the, around the world. Well, you know, when it's not quarantine time. And, uh, <laughs> and also, yeah, is just sought after in so many different places. So I uh, wanted to quickly uh, go ahead and introduce Jasmine Choi. Jasmine Choi! <laughs> hey, Jasmine. Do you like do you like what I prepared for you the the, the confetti? Wow, that's, that's I can that's I can turn that off. <laughs> I can turn that off if that. you if you don't like it. I like I, it. You can just just just, just continuously have it. <laughs> okay, I'll turn it off. <laughs> Thank How you. are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thanks for such a warm welcome. Thank you for having me. It's a really big pleasure. It's funny that I watch you on YouTube exactly the same frame. But now I'm on that frame too. That's a little weird and very nice. <laughs> oh, I'm just, uh, I'm so scared that the, uh, the audio is going to be off. Like, and right now the people in the chat, they, they've gotten used to, they, they're like, they like to troll me too. So I, 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 I don't know if like actually the audio is off or if the audio isn't off because people just be like audio is off in the chat and i get so scared why do you do this to me oh. <laughs> not funny you guys <laughs> no yes yeah, stop us. it stop it wait i have to check over in discord now i'm so scared <laughs> is the audio off <laughs> oh no no it's not it's not stop scaring me anyway um welcome jasmine and Thank you, well, thank, you. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. I know you've done. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, a couple of these live streams, really? and it's been uh, it's been great. Um, well, thank so, you. so um, yeah, I guess we're here to learn a bit about flute. Actually, I prepared some flute facts uh, in case really? you're, you're you're wondering. So, um, okay, so tell me if these flute facts are true or not. Um, okay, so <laughs> for those of you who are too small to so to read much? it, wow. yeah, so a a. A person who plays the flute can be referred to as a flute player, a flautist, a flutist, or less commonly a fluter. Would you would you <laughs> would you say that that that's that's the that's that's accurate? Um, I think fluter is more a, a, a casual term rather than official one. But oh, uh, okay. Hey, Jasmine, can I ask <laughs> you uh, for a quick favor? Um, we're gonna um, make you uh, unmute you on uh, Discord. Just go ahead and do that. Unmute, unmute yourself yeah on discord okay. yeah i think your audio is a little bit quiet so i'm just gonna go ahead and i see okay. is it better now yes i think that's probably better i think uh guys let me know if that's better or not and i'm gonna go ahead and okay. yeah that should be good uh, let me uh i can even raise. i can raise your volume here okay <laughs> all right there we go One. i don't want to be too loud Okay, that should be good now. Okay. We're, we're going to get back <laughs> to it. You. But um, yeah, anyway, back to the flute fact. Um, the second fact is, did you know that flutes are considered one of the earliest instruments uh, and date back to Germany over 35,000 years ago? Is that, is that right? Yeah, that's true. And we take a lot of proud for that. Okay, nice. <laughs> nice. Awesome. awesome. All right, well, I guess it's, I guess that might, it's, it's older than like... Any other, is it the oldest, like besides, I guess, the drums, maybe the oldest instrument? Right. Yeah, that's what we guess. Nice, nice. And take proud of. <laughs> nice. Okay. And I have, I have some more flute facts. So uh, oh, many wow. cultures, as a result, have their own version of the flute. 
for example, you know, uh, the most popular traditional Japanese flutes is the shakuhachi. I guess there's a, also a Chinese mm -hmm. flute as well, and also right. a, uh, you know, probably a Korean flute as well, right? Korean flute as well. I think every country has their own traditional flute in nice. their own form. Nice, yeah. nice. Awesome. Very well, interesting. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> flutes have been made out of a lot of different materials throughout history, including bone, wood, glass, ivory, plastic. Oh, not good for the environment. Resin, brass, nickel, silver, <laughs> silver, gold, and platinum. Wow. Have how many Basically of those? Basically anything, right? How many of those have you had a have you played on? Like out of all those Ooh. different materials, have you played on all of them? Let's see, no, only wood, certain kinds of woods, and silver and gold. Silver. And I have tried on a platinum. Yeah. Never owned does it either. does it actually make the the um, the sound better? Uh, I wouldn't say better, but it's very different. Okay. Nice. Um, it has very different characteristics and qualities, and like, I think it works for different kinds of music as well. Oh, okay. Okay, <laughs> so you get different sounds and stuff. I can't, yeah, I can't believe I'm doing flute talk with Ray Chen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, that's what we're here to learn about. We just want to learn about uh, all the different types of instruments. We want to, we want to, like, you know, I know very little about flute. My sister played flute um, yeah, when she was exactly. growing up. You're so I, I just want to yeah. have a chance to, and I'm sure all of us here would love to have a chance to uh, just, yeah, learn about, like, different types of things. So, so anyway, back to the facts. Uh, I believe we have the last one. It's, do uh, you know that George Washington, James Madison, and Leonardo da Vinci all played the flute? That's pretty... Ooh, that I didn't know. Yes! I have hey. one thing that you didn't know. Ah. <laughs> hey, now confetti to you. <laughs> yeah, confetti! <laughs> confetti! <laughs> Yay! Oh, wait. <laughs> I promise not to overuse that. <laughs> mm. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, anyway, that's uh, just thought I would start off with a little bit of a little bit of uh, flu facts. So that was um, just a fun thing anyway. But uh, moving right fun. on, yeah. we, uh, I thought um, mm -hmm. we could go ahead and perhaps review a couple of videos that people had submitted. Yeah. Uh, both on the Discord and on the uh, Reddit. So um, I know there were tons of submissions and... It was yeah, pretty it was difficult. really overwhelming to right, pick only right. three. Right, right, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. um, I I feel like it's yeah. We well, we've uh, I think we might might have three, maybe maybe if like one more. Um, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, but mm -hmm. um, gonna go right to Secret. it. Secret. All right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay. Um, but anyway, so all right, here we go. Flute. I don't know any of these flute pieces, so you'll have to be the one who. Uh, it says everything. <laughs> All right, there we go. First up is okay. Anthony Lee. He's 18 years old, and he's going to be playing the Ibert flute concerto. I, I, Ebert, e, wait, wait a second. Sibelius, Ebert, 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 Ebert. Dang it! All right, Ebert flute concerto. Here we go. Yeah. That was, that was pretty, that was, I, I, I don't know wow. about you, I, I'm going to let you do the talking actually, because I, I don't know anything about food, so <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead for, and, and for, let you make all the suggestions actually. Probably for, you know, violin, it's very unfamiliar, unfamiliar, but for the flutist, it's one of the standard pieces that 
we all have to learn and go through. Um, when when I was learning this, especially that third movement, for me, up to that point of my life, this was the meanest piece ever written because it's so awkward to begin with. Um, technically, finger-wise, very not so autistic, I would say. That's what I thought back then. And then after two pages in, you have to play the exact same whole thing half step higher. Oh, so can you mess this with <laughs> your brain a little I, bit? I just could not believe it. Yeah, so, yeah. Is it, is it, do, it's, I mean, we'll get to, we'll get to some, uh, some, some ask, ask questions later, but I just, this question just popped up in my mind right now. Um, do, do, do flutists, is it common for flutists to have, or flautists or, or um, flute players, fluters, uh, to have perfect pitch? Is that, is that sort of a, a common thing or is it even necessary or would it actually be detrimental? Because you, like you said, there might be transposing. I mean, flute is a sort of transposing instrument, right? You have different ones or is that no that's clarinet never mind yeah the, the alto flute is oh, yes yeah alto flute that's exactly what i was that was exactly what i was talking about yes <laughs> yes um but i think perfect pitch is relative um okay, okay. but the, the normal flute you see is in c and um but perfect pitch or not this half step higher playing half step higher it's not um the violin you play a little bit high, higher maybe? right 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 i mean literally like <laughs> right. like like you know literally, if we had a different like this higher. and this would be like so, two different yeah notes. but yeah. i think for a wind instrument it's complete different fingerings so very mean okay is there anyone um yeah i remember so, going through this hell <laughs> so so what would you what would you if there was like one thing you could say to this person like to anthony um but to, like, anthony just, yeah Anthony Lee, right? Yeah. Um, he he did it such at ease. I was so impressed. I was like, whoa. <laughs> um, if I can tell you Anthony, um, one thing is um, you can bring out the trademark of Iber e a little more. It's much more humorous and witty, even though you're suffering to play every single note. Uh, you have to groove it on top of it and they enjoy it more and um especially when you're playing a lot of notes it shouldn't sound like a bunch of so many notes so you have to pick which ones are more highlight highlights and think of the longer lines so that you are not covered with all the notes so you you should be a little on top of it, looking over the map. Um, yeah. So would you say like that's kind of like more clarity and also like kind of having preference over certain notes that it's not every note is equal, that even though it's chromatic and it, it, it's sort right. of more like phrasing and like towards a certain right. note. Yeah, it's, it's so hard to even learn all the notes to begin with, but then if you are so into every note it only sounds like should be more so so that the listeners can have a little bit more idea where you're going to nice yeah. nice all right well uh thank you for that and that was uh yeah thank you anthony as well um for submitting yeah that thanks video. for sending yeah oh, well, let's yeah. uh let's move on to the next one um i believe okay. the next one is going to be uh, Nikki, Nikki Flutist. Uh, she's 19 years old. She's playing the, okay, am I saying this right? The Reinecke flute. Reinecke, yes. Yes, all right. Yes, Reinecke. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Reinecke flute concerto. Um, and uh, she's got, yeah, she's 19 years old. So let's let's take a look at this one.
song. Yeah. I, I don't know if it was Have just you ever like, heard this? Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, <laughs> I had not, but then I went, after um, we, our, our talk, we, I went ahead and listened to it a bit. So. <laughs> it, it's also a very standard flute repertoire, it's, uh, one of the most important flute concertos in the Romantic era. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, also my favorite, one of my favorite. Would you say it's like um, on the level of like, in terms of, 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 of like import, of like fame, like it's like Tchaikovsky's violin concerto, like Reinecke would be like- For flutists, for flutists. I would say, yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So, so <laughs> and then, what would you, yeah, what would you like, what, did you, yeah, did you when were you the, the, was the first time you played it? There are, there are a lot of um, singing, um, operatic quality, and Nick is bringing out with a lot of emotions. Um, but what would drastically change is probably the vibrato. Um, I don't know if I can talk about vibrato here. Oh, I, 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 think we actually, I think we actually have I don't want to uh, board, you know, uh, people. Well, you know, we yeah. don't own vibrato, but uh, violinists, we, yeah, we have string players, we do know, know how to, right. how to vibrate. But um, I, so, I think that actually is a question later up, so let's, let's save that for later. Sorry. But, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so I, I hear a lot of, um, uh, you know, I shouldn't sing it, and... <laughs> if I just <laughs> yeah, I don't think that, I don't think the, only the, the, the audio from this would like like singing, <laughs> but you sing beautifully. It's, only the it's, sound it's... wave. It was like <laughs> it was very straight, more or less. And uh -huh. and if she tries more, oh, I don't know if you can hear. Yeah, that kind of spin. And it makes the phrasing more expressive. And she is actually doing a lot of fast vibrato, which fits very well in this phrase. But what I would want her to do is the depth of the vibrato. So if the wave, what she's doing is like this, but she can do much deeper down and up so that it's more audible. And nice. if I can add one very little thing uh, to Nikki, is that her hand position, uh, that's what I noticed in the very first set. Uh, the, when you hold the flute, the keys should be parallel to the ground rather than rolling too much out or too much in. In her case, it's too much rolled in, which is not so healthy for both left hand and the right hand because left hand is like this and right hand is like that. And when you try to move your fingers like this, much easier this way. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like so, when, when violinists, like we get told to like exactly. make sure we don't, we don't do like this and things, that, right? right? Yeah, yeah, we're always like this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then fix this angle first and then uh, you can roll in and out the angle of the head joint accordingly. Uh, ah, so, okay. Because the flute can be uh, like... Yeah, there are three Yeah, right. Three parts, parts. Right? Head joints, okay. body joints, and foot joints. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. Wow, that's that's already, yeah, like you can... You can and, and if you twist the parts, as long as they're fitted properly, is there like you can have leeway and it doesn't... I mean, would it affect the sound or, or, or uh, like, how does that work? Can you just um, like customize we it? We move you around want? the head joint, for example, for many things, but first of all, to tune, because the longer the instrument, the pitch goes lower. Uh, so by, I'm talking about one millimeter or less, and you have to listen and either push in or push out and also the angle of the head joint and that will make the flute sound very different it depends on how much you're rolled in or rolled out if you're too much rolled in it sounds a little too closed up 
because you're closing up the air hole, I would say mouthpiece hole. And in this small hole, the air has to go through, so there are more um, speed and pressure. But at the other hand, you cannot have such a resonate sound. And mm. if you're too much rolled out, there are too much air going in, so it mm. could sound a little airy. I Right. So you I, have to find your golden spot. If I, if I, I might, might, I guess, like, interpret that into violinistic terms, I guess that would be sort of similar to the sound post adjustment. Like, our sound post, if it's too tight, it would be too closed, right? And if it's too loose, mm -hmm. the air, it would be just kind of like too, it wouldn't be tight enough. So I think that that's like right. similar to, very similar to any kind of instrument, um, the, the tightness so. of, or, or like in your case, it's like the airiness. So, so I guess in a, in a, mm -hmm. a what, what is it like a good flute sound is like, what would that be? Would that be like the perfect balance between airy and solid? Is that, is that what it is? I, I think so. Um, also it should be different and customized. Um, different phrases and different styles of music but in general you don't want to hear airy sound from the flute it was when uh, I've seen the term from I think it was from Debussy one of the orchestral pieces and it said flautando yeah and back then when they wrote flautando on the strings on the violin, for example, you should sound so fluffy and airy, like, you know, <laughs> I was laughing so hard on that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we but, see that. We see um, that. That was probably the image of the flute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, well, I guess it's yeah, like us. Like, we don't want to, we don't want to crunch too much, right, when we're playing. We want to, like, we want to have impact, but we don't want, like, it to be too crunchy. So I guess that's the, the, the difference of, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when, when, when we need it to be crunchy and more dense sound, we get it out. And I think it's about how to control nice. the, the airiness or how much condensed your sound mm. and so on be happening even in one one note wow well thanks for that um and <laughs> <laughs> thank you nikki for for posting thank you um, nikki yeah yeah bravo uh, let's uh let's move on to our next person uh here we have oh gosh this is testing me today with the flute composers what's next <laughs> i believe it's gaubert why did oh, I make Gobert. this? What is, what is this? Gobert. Um, yeah, Gobert. it's Gobert, <laughs> Nocturne, and Allegro, uh, the Scherzo. So, uh, yeah, let's take a look at that. That's being uh, played by. Oh, wait. <laughs> Why isn't his name on here? Um, Gobert. Gobert is played by. Let's take a look here. Wait, no, we're not ready for Gaubert. We're ready Why for, we're, we're doing Chaminade. Let's do the Chaminade. Chaminade. Yes. I, I, did, I, did I pronounce that right? No, you were perfect. Okay, let's, let's take a look at this. <laughs> nope, that, nope. All right. Oh, that's Chaminade.
really, really <laughs> fast. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, it's Bravo. Like, yeah. um, I, <laughs> what his name? What's his name? His his name is Matt, and that was uh, he's Bravo seventeen Matt. years old. Wow. The Chaminade Concertino. Hmm. Um. This is actually in the middle section. In the beginning, it's totally different heavenly melody. And then uh, I think Matt could play with even more contrast than the very beginning. Now this is when the real tension begins and completely something else. And it should sound more like we are sitting on the edge of the chair and like, oh my God, what's getting on? It should be a little more mysterious in the beginning and more tension. Um, so we could be, um, how do you say, a little bit more comfortable side, da -da 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 casual. We could easily be that. Or we can be more like, <gasps> and then it develops something more and more. Okay. The whole atmosphere and the tension between the notes, uh, I, would, I would say to Matt, and even in the legato, even it's very slurred. Um, should sound more in, like one long noodle, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> rather than different together. Um, like, um, should be all glued together each note. It, so, and then, could, wow. So it could be even more glued. Oh yes. Wow. Yeah. See, to me, it all sounded it, it sounded pretty glued together, but that's just because like <laughs> it's like oh yeah, I, I just take it like it, it you know how it is. It's like that. It can be more glued. You're saying? Yeah, even more. Okay. Then. And nice. then after when there's the sixteenth note articulating articulating section. <laughs> See, I'm hearing myself when. One second afterwards, so I'm like, "Oh, sorry." Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's <It's> my. Okay. <laughs> that's, <laughs> so that, that might be my uh, boomer boomerness um, going on. I'll I'll try right, and fix I'm getting that. Used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Only yourself, so, not so not when, anything else, right? You're not hearing anything else a okay. second later. No, it's just myself. Great. I'm getting used to it. So it's, it's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to change and, anything uh, right now in case, uh, in case you, you no. know, <laughs> we turn this into an audio test. <laughs> We've been doing the audio test in the last 15 minutes before the live. We're like, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, was, it was stressful. Oh, and yeah, I think we're good. Uh, yeah, so one last thing to Matt um, is that when I play the articulation section later on, then it should be even more buckly, a little shorter, in other words, <laughs> rather than da 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 da, should be much lighter and crunchier, crispier. Wow. Okay. Crunchy, <laughs> crispy goodness. Wow. Well, thanks. Thanks uh, to Matt for uh, 17 years Thank old. You, Matt. Yeah, for for submitting that <laughs> video. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. I think we have just time for one more. Finger uh, wipe out. <laughs> we, have, we have time for one more um, before we move on to other stuff. Uh, but uh, this one just really kind of took my uh, attention. I, I I mean, what do I know about flute? But I really thought this one was uh, pretty cool. Um, but and, you say your sister played the flute. Yeah, but that's like. <laughs> like could you imagine it'd be like your sibling plays whatever oh my sister's a doctor therefore come to me when you have health problems like no just, like, just that, pulling your leg <laughs> like, 
yeah, that's uh, that's uh, we're not we're not gonna get into politics, but uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna uh, we're gonna go to it's giving you the, hard time. The, the, the last one here, but uh, this is um, we have our last one. It's Galbert. It's the Nocturne and Allegro Skirt Sando by oh gosh, and I don't know how to pronounce his name. Tainip, I think. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna. Tr- Bravo. <laughs> and that Say backdrop it. though, right? Like that, like, how cool was that? Wow. Like, it was like inside yeah, of... Yeah, I love that background. Yeah. Like a store wow. or something. Yeah, it was so cool. Yeah. Like a pottery Sorry? store. A pottery store. Yeah. yeah Amazing. So cool. and <laughs> Someone in the chat said, she really... must be living with her grandmother. <laughs> Could you imagine, like, just like... <laughs> Her and her grandmother there, and then she's like plays flute in the back, and then like you know it like charms people into the store. <laughs> oh yeah, great, great marketing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, wow, oh, she's got a very very beautiful sound, and I love her natural sense of phrasing. Yeah, it's very easy to listen to. Um, I would only say one very little thing which is her breathing uh the breathing shouldn't get into listening to your music is that i heard a lot of breathing sound every time she was taking a breath do you think that might um, could be the microphone though could be Uh be. okay okay but um whatever reason it was it shouldn't bother you or uh, for the listeners and the breathing is what makes a good sound she's already got a fabulous sound and it could be even better if she can breathe a little bit deeper and more open because when you're all closed up that's when it makes more breathing noise it's more um... instead of Yeah, so it happens when you're tensed. Yeah, so when I sometimes sit behind the screen in the competitions or the audition, we could tell if this person is really tensed and really stressed. And... Oh, <laughs> you know? yeah, so like their 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 tell. throat closes up a little bit more, and then they're they're not mm-hmm. like, oh, I see. Yeah. Am I doing it right? Okay, can I get a can I get a like a ten second masterclass from Jasmine Choi? Amazing. Is that? <laughs> no, <Nope>, too loud. <laughs> no, I'm just, it. just kidding. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. So it's like a bit. I guess it's a little bit like um our bow. Like if it's trembling, if we're really tense, and then the sound becomes very like tense. Um, yeah. Yeah. The too. flute. Flute version would be like, or the wind version would be like, if that person, the you'd be exposed. If, and if, yeah. also, 
I used to have that in my college days. It was really paranoid me, actually, because it lasted for a few months. And whenever I went on stage, I got nervous, and then I would put an unnecessary vibrato, almost like tremolo. Mm -hmm. So instead of my sound will become. <laughs> oh yeah, that's like when we do unwanted down bow and up and, staccato. Yeah, <laughs> and then once that happens. I think of it, oh, it shouldn't happen again. And then you're thinking about it and it happens again. And also, oh, it just reminded me another nightmare was that I would swallow during the playing. Oh, that yeah. That was also really scary. So during the long tone, I had to swallow. And then next concert, I get nervous about that. And then I do I didn't even yeah. think about that. Like the nightmare when, is coming all back to me. Because, <sighs> because you know, I often like when I'm playing, you know, a piece. Like sometimes I, I notice that like I swallow, and then it's like, oh, well. But then, and the violin kind of moves a little bit because my throat kind of like it like shuffles a little bit. I can't imagine what that must be like for the flute or any wind instrument if you oh. have to if you have to swallow. Yeah. Wow. It was not an unhappy experience. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Amazing, amazing. But, uh, oh, okay. So yeah. um, I thought that, like, actually, we, uh, there was some, a couple of questions that we had. So, but first of all, wanted to mm -hmm. say thank you to all of you who submitted. And, of course, thank you to Zeynep and uh, everyone, Matt, Anthony, and also, uh, yeah, the uh, Nikki as well <laughs> there. And um, yeah, so thank you so much to everyone who submitted videos. Uh, and thank you to Jasmine as well for giving such insightful comments and yeah. sharing your wisdom and your thank experience you. with us. Yeah, it's so. an honor to be here. First non violinist guest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're learning. We're learning so much. So, uh, just wanted to uh, qu quickly move on to like one or two questions, and then I thought we could maybe. It's only fair every time I have a bring a guest on, we have to review one of your videos, one or two of your videos. Oh. So, um, you know, we got to put you in the hot seat, and uh, but we'll get right to that. First of all, because I, I, there were a couple of questions that really caught my eye. Um, and, uh, yeah, they were, they were just really interesting here. Um, you know, what inspired you to make arrangements of violin pieces such as the Tchaikovsky and Mendelssohn concertos or the Ronda Capriccioso? You know, I guess you have these videos on, uh, YouTube. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And for anyone who's wondering, uh, Jasmine's links are in the description below. So go check out her stuff. <laughs> it's all there. YouTube, Facebook, you know, Instagram, everything's there. Um, so yeah, go check out her videos. You're gonna see it's it's they're freaking amazing and make you realize. Oh my god! Like, now I would get thing. reviewed by all the violin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. That's it's, only, it's only fair. Um, so so um, you know, because because okay, no, this question, I'm yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna sh I'm gonna just go ahead and put that in your mind because um, the the the. The particular video that I have found is uh, is originally a violin concerto, so uh, I want us all to take a look at this. But I think it's pretty incredible what you did. So um, take take a look at this. This is this is uh, whoop, sorry. Uh, this is you, <laughs> small boomer moment there, uh, playing the Mendelssohn violin concerto. Where are you going, Jasmine? <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Well, why am I covering your face? Oh, there we go.
thank you for stopping. <laughs> no, no, it was, it was great. It was amazing. <laughs> I, I would let it keep going, but I mean, the, the rest of you will just have to check it out on her and on her YouTube. But like, I, I mean, I will say that the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto, I, I used to think that it would like, it could only sound good on the violin, but you know, it sounds pretty good on the flute. I gotta say. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. You, you, I mean, you make, make it so sound like, yeah, really amazing. Yeah. Are you, are you circular Ooh. breathing or something or are you like, how are you not uh, taking here? breaths? In the Mendelssohn, I don't, but certain pieces I do. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, okay. But okay. <laughs> you so know get, about circular breathing. I, I, I know about <laughs> circular breathing because I, it's, you know, it's always been sort of this thing of, of mine to be able to like, I, I, I'm, you know, grew up in Australia and in Australia we have this, we have this instrument called the didgeridoo. Like it's what the indigenous people of Australia uh, play. It's one of the like the native instruments of Australia, you could say. And um, it's it, it's like you need to. It's kind of like the embouchure is a bit like a, a a tuba, but like bigger. And then it's like this hollowed out wooden log. And then it's got beeswax to form a mouthpiece. And then you just kind of go like 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 that, that kind of thing. Oh gosh, that was terrible. What am I doing? But I love it. <laughs> love and then like go, like, <laughs> <laughs> they make these, like things. And uh, wow. What I, anyway, and, and I always like, I'll check that out. It was, always, <laughs> it was always my dream to be able to play that instrument properly. And you can't do, you can't play the didgeridoo without, um, you can't play the didgeridoo without circular breathing, mate. Yeah, that's, that, that's the reality. <laughs> there we go, Australian. <laughs> really? Ah. Yeah, yeah, you can't. It's just, <laughs> you'll just get stuck. You gotta make a, cause it's just a constant, it's a drone instrument. Even though it's a wind instrument, it's used as a drone. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so okay. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed my beatboxing there. You're like, you're like, <laughs> yes. you're like, what did I just, what did I just <laughs> Okay. Anyway, um, so so yeah, I guess that uh, pertains back to the uh, the question here that we had, um, which was like kind oh of. Yeah, I haven't answered that yet. Um, there is this one fact that you probably don't know about me after all these years. Um, I have played the violin for <gasps> nine years. For nine years. Nine years. Yes. Yeah. Um, I wasn't serious about it, but my mom was a violinist. She was always teaching violin at home, um, college students mostly. And I've heard so many of the violin standards growing up and honestly hating violin so much because I wanted my mom's attention <laughs> all by myself, but she was always kind of teaching violin so whenever i heard the doorbell for the next student come coming and i was like oh no another violin student another oh. violin sound yeah. um and then now it's all coming back to wait i know this piece <laughs> i want to play it now <laughs> yeah. yeah wow that's amazing like yeah that's oh, how little jasmine small happened. jasmine like wanting oh that's so cute thank you for sharing that story that's like really nice yeah, yeah that's like super nice oh yeah. well so um but yeah so 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 i guess that's what inspired you you have a special connection to violin and well violinists oh, yeah, we, we, only we, later, we have a special connection to you so there we go <laughs> <laughs> yeah awesome um but me... i would only pick the violin pieces that would actually work okay to the flute because not I don't think uh, all all of, all of it works for the flute mm, yeah. I see I see wow yeah anyway <laughs> nice nice um, moving on to our next question uh, oh hi Jasmine and Ray how did you guys meet and can you name something that you admire about each other mm. you go first <gasps> How did we meet? How did we meet? Yeah. I don't quite remember how exactly, but um, 
I think Curtis is just a very small screen. Yeah, so, okay. For each other. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> Jasmine and I, we went to the same school, uh, but not during the exact same years. We were there roughly around, around the same time, but not quite. Um, and then uh, so there was, we actually, I found our old uh, Facebook like correspondence back when I was like, must have been like, 17 years old I was like Jasmine what's that Aww. did you like you I think you visited school one day and um like or maybe you were like listening to an orchestral thing and then I was like oh my gosh that's Jasmine Choi <gasps> and then I I like wrote to you like, like back then we didn't slide into each other's DMs but you know it was just like hey Jasmine like was that you at school today like super awkward like oh my gosh she's so beautiful <laughs> Kind of moment, and then um, yeah, you you actually replied to me. You you actually replied. It was, I did. It was really, yeah, it was of really nice. Of course, I replied yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, who was I? I was like, I was like, you know, nobody. So you know, it was like really kind. So yeah, I, I felt like that was um, something that was really you know, you were probably like, who 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 is this random like Come on. kid who was just <laughs> You've like, been always the you know. chat. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really nice. Um, well, yeah, so that's my that, that that's that would be one one uh, what I admire about about Jasmine would be that. Well, I, I haven't like, said it yet. You haven't what? But you go ahead. Okay. I, I haven't said my part yet. Oh yeah, no, sorry, I'm I'm terrible. I'm a terrible <laughs> host. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> but I was gonna say, I mean, art for all your amazing play. I what I. What I most appreciate about Ray Chen is that you haven't changed all these years. Your positivity and your caring for others and you're you're so kind and always thinking about, you know, friends and old friends and also we've seen each other over the years and all over the place and all over the world. And you've been always the same. I was always impressed because you've been taking over the whole world and music scene and, and you have fans everywhere. But when I see you, it was like always back in the, uh, I don't know, first time we met. Yeah, you're always the same, same right Chen to me. And that's very admirable for me. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm, I think I'm slightly, <laughs> slightly blushing here. Uh, <laughs> I uh, that's really kind. Thank you so much uh, for your words. That's like. Super... I'm sorry that I have to say it to your face. Oh, oh yeah, man. that's a little bit like it's like. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm just gonna, like put this up right. Here. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> well, this is this is not awkward. Didn't mean to embarrass you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's my turn. All right, so what I'd like to say is no. Well, you seriously. embarrassed me already. With so go easy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, well, no, it's it's actually relating to that. That it was. I always admired that. Like, you know, that was an example. It was just one example of where, like, you were. I mean, you know, guys. Jasmine is like has been on like national television like tons of times. Like, uh, and she's revolutionized the flute. It's like a, a modern flute goddess and was already that when I was, you know, first starting out at uh, Curtis. Um, so to me, it was really uh, inspiring and humbling and as a reminder to always be humble, you know, like that no matter how high you might achieve one day that you always remain very firmly rooted into the ground and that uh just your sort of reply to this random kid who um happened to see you walk into school one day uh that was really admirable and i was just like yeah that's something that i would that would i would, that would like to be so you know that was uh, thanks to your uh, inspiration. I've tried to keep oh. true to that. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Thank you. I was like gulping. 
<laughs> so yeah, oh, thanks for thank that. Thank you. So um, let's go to the next next question. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Oh, hello, Jasmine. Yes, as a string player, I've always wondered if vibrato on the flute is a true vibrato or more of a tremolo. When flautists do vibrato, it sounds like the note is wavering in volume rather than pitch. Is this true? Ah, yeah, like compared to a singer where it's like, I, I, I like that. Whereas like, it's just, <laughs> is it just like a, a volume thing? This is a very, this is a very string question. <laughs> very good question. I remember learning vibratos on violin. That was, I, I don't know, one of the hardest parts and violin learning among so many others. <laughs> but flute playing vibrato more with the air. So I, I don't know if it's the right explanation to the violinist who uh, asked. Um, imagine you're doing the vibrato with only with your bow pressure and bow speed. I don't know if that makes any sense, totally. but I think that's it. Really? Oh, great! Yeah, because everybody <laughs> in the beginning tries to do vibrato with their right hand. Like as a kid, that's mm. what I did as well. I thought, like, mm. I didn't realize that you I would didn't. actually have to change the note because that's changing the note. You learn that note when you put your first finger mm. down. That's a certain note. You know, it's an E mm. on the D string and or, or a B on the A string. But then you don't think like I would actually like. Like, like, because you learn that oh, you, you're just trying for so many months or years to have the right intonation, right? Why would you want to mess up that intonation? It's like you have to learn intonation first before mm. you can do vibrato on violin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see. Similar so, but I guess flute is that. So, so the note you're saying the pitch doesn't change. Oh, slightly, I would say, but we shouldn't go too much. Um, with the air control, it should go sort of straight, air streaming, goes. And a lot of students, when they first begin learning the vibrato, they go like. So the vibrato is going like up and down like crazy. But to be able to control like a wave with the only airstream, that's when the vibrato technique of the flute comes in. And also at the same time, the pitch should stay the same. And a lot of flutists, um, a lot of youngsters, um, when they put the vibrato, oftentimes they do it out of the habit. Either the vibrato is on or not, and mostly it's always on, but then when it's on, it's always the same. It just becomes a habit of your own playing, playing habit. But then to think of how to use the vibrato in different passages and different styles, um, that's, that's also another technique and vibrato, I would say. Wow, amazing. Um, I wanted to uh, quickly cut uh, back um, into, I found another video of yours that I found to be pretty amazing. Uh, this one- Not over yet? Nope, nope, we have one more video. You gotta, <laughs> wait a minute, where, where are you going? Where are you going, Jasmine? Are you, going? Are you uh, trying to hide? <laughs> Um, <laughs> All right. We're, we're going to we're going to go into this here. amazing here. video. Uh, this this is water. this is titled like because I asked an earlier question about <laughs> circular breathing, um, and this video apparently you do circular breathing where you just don't breathe. So like actually when I looked when I first watched this video, I tried like in every single movie or TV show where the actor or actress like falls into water and or they're like swimming. I always try to like hold my breath with them to see if it's possible. So for this, I, I think, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I always do that. Right. Do yeah, everyone <laughs> does that. So, so I, 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 but I would not recommend 
guys to try this at home because uh, this 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 would be dangerous. So not um, on another water, <laughs> no, or not circular <laughs> breathing without proper advice. <laughs> I like almost died you watching that. Yourself. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I was so what the heck? <laughs> wait, wait, okay. First, first, first of all, I, I gotta let the, <laughs> let the people watching know like, like, that's called the Great Train Race. Race is that right? Mm-hmm. And it's representing a train. Right? That's why it's like just continuous. And at the end, you're like the two, two, that kind of thing. Right. right? right that's right, kind right. of what it's supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> what? I can't believe that. Yeah. Hey, does this mean that? Um, I have a dumb question. Does this mean that, like, you can, um, um, like, blow out, you know, those birthday candles that, like, when you blow them out, then they come back alight? It'd be like, they like trick they're like trickster birthday candles because they like they make you be like oh, oh no then they like come back alive yeah they're those kind of birthday candles so so if you'd be like i know you i want that <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd be like the best <laughs> birthday candle candles blower. for flutists yeah yeah, the, yeah exactly candles for flutists like like a challenge uh, oh, that's a great way gosh. to learn circular <laughs> yeah 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 circular breathing um, but is there, is there like a, uh, like, how does that work? If you were to like, give us like a quick rundown of circular breathing, is it um, just... Yeah, so the, the most popular method is that you put water in the cup with a straw and you should keep blowing so that the bubble is not stopping. And how you do it is that you save air in your cheeks Okay, and hang on a second. You, you just keep talking about how this circular breathing. I'm gonna go get a straw and a cup. <laughs> okay, uh, shall I keep talking? Are you guys listening? So while you're using up the air in your cheeks, then that's the time when you're breathing in new air from the nose. And the instruments like, I don't know, oboe, clarinet, which uh, requires a little less air than the flute, they can go much longer with the air from the cheek. And the flute is, we need so much more air, so with the air in the cheeks, it doesn't last so much. So I think it takes a little longer time for the flute to learn. 
Now Mr. Raychan is ready. I am so ready. Your guys. straw is huge. Yeah, well, it's a recyclable <laughs> straw. It's like I don't want to. I want to use the same. You know, it's like bad for the environment if you, if you, if you buy those like tons of straws. So I just have one that I. Is it really like use. really big or is it just looking big? That's I really. I don't want to answer that question because we have kids watching. So <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna. We're, Never mind. All right. Whoa. What are we doing? All right. We're going to learn circular breathing. <laughs> We're going to learn circular breathing here, guys. This is... Uh... <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So so do I just... Do, what do I do here? Do I just like, like... Like... Do I keep the air and I force the air out and then I kind of quickly breathe? Yeah. While you're pushing this air out, you yeah. breathe in. To your nose. Okay. And then you have to make a transition from the nose to the mouth. The the air that's the actually the hard part. Transition being smooth. I so like to keep it smooth. Do, do, okay. do first um blowing from the cheeks and then breathing into the nose at the same time. So I, hear the I think I think I have a little bit too much water. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drink some first. Actually, <laughs> through my straw. Okay. Uh, oh, you're doing it! Here comes a circular breathing prodigy. Hey, you're so good. It's working. Well, there was a little bit of a stop there. Okay, I kind of wow. that, that was that was not as smooth that that final one. That was that was that right? That was that was so impressive. Thank you. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, guys, guys, you should totally try this at home. I mean, I mean, like, you know, yeah, like, yeah, that that would be cool. So so we can all learn circular breathing. That's how together. we do it. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Wow. 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 Amazing. Thanks for trying. <laughs> yeah. No. Amazing. Amazing. Wow. Um, I. That's awesome. That that but that's <laughs> that's such a cool video. I gotta say, like you guys, you can go check out that full video on YouTube as well on Jasmine's channel. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, we, I think we have a few few remaining questions, and then and then before before we let you go. Um, so uh, the next question. Oh yeah, this one is from Reddit. It says. Hi Jasmine, mm -hmm. uh, and I cut out just the middle section of the question because uh, I thought it was like we we the a technical thing. Um, this is more a flute specific question. My weakness is intonation. When I'm sharp, I roll in. When I'm flat, I roll out. See, I didn't even know what that meant. Um, however, whenever I roll out, I'm like thinking like, oh, roll, like I roll. <laughs> um, <laughs> however, I, I, however, whenever right. I roll out, I sacrifice roll a good in, tone. Roll out. Yeah, most <laughs> notes below the staff are always very flat for me, but when I roll out that far to get it in tune, my tone is extremely thin, airy, and soft. You see, this is why I picked this question because, like, I, I thought that it must be pretty important because it's very, very technical and very, very specific, and also I just thought mm. like. I just didn't know what it meant, so I, I thought maybe you could, you could help us understand this. Um, so it says, uh, when I roll out that far to get it in tune, my tone is extremely thin, airy, and soft. Is there something I can do with my embouchure to get those flat notes in tune while keeping good tone? Mm, actually, it's a very good and flutistic question. Um, so when the flute is, say, rolling in, it's about the angle of the instrument that we talked about, uh, especially the head joint. And when you roll in, the pitch also is a little lower. Mm -hmm. I mean, it depends on how much you roll in. This person, Destina, uh, obviously she's rolling in and out too much of the angle at, the, at a time. Uh, it should be a very slight adjustment and the very first step 
is to develop your ear. Uh, a lot of Buddhist things that you just play the note, but actually we have to listen and pitch. I often tell them, the violinists, you know, they have to create a pitch out of nowhere. <laughs> you know? And we have the given fingerings and we should know it's not 100% yet about 95, I would say, because the modern flutes that it's making now, it's getting more and more perfect in the pitch. And at the same time, still, there are the rest 5% or rest 3%. Um, if you listen better, it's a very slight adjustment, rolling in and out or uh, making a little pressure in the armature or relaxing more armature. Whenever you do more pressure here, pitch goes up and vice versa. When you relax, pitch goes down. Um, that's the basic theorem. And of course, every flute is different. So if you know your flute's tendency, that also helps as well. But first up is developing the ears. Wow. Yeah. Great. Learn from violinists. I, I, <laughs> I, I have to confess, I, I didn't really follow along with that, but go practice. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, oh, thanks. this is the last question that we have. Oh, this one's. I, I thought this was pretty funny. What do you think of violists? Do wind players make viola jokes too? Oh, God. Wait, is it viol violist? Oh, violist. Ah, it's a question. Yeah, it's a question. Do you? What do you think of? What do you think of violists? And I mean, do wind players make viola jokes, or is there like perhaps a? A, a, a wind instrument that is the viola of wind instruments. I don't know. Maybe you're like <laughs> laughing at the tuba player in the back, or I, I, I don't know. I'm just like, yeah. What is wind culture? I, well, I think when I meet with a lot of or wine flutists, I think we only talk about flutes. <laughs> um, I would confess that. Confess uh, that we're a little close minded in that sense, or we're very much phonetics of the flute, and we talk about technical things and the flute how to get the good sound, that articulation, or what kind of flute is good, what, what flute do you play, what head joint do you play. What do you think of gold or silver? Oh come Endless on! This, this is not the this is not <laughs> the answer to the question. Do you make fun of violists? <laughs> come on, Jasmine. Hey, no, it's okay. You don't have to answer the question. I, I will not. Uh, gosh, like someone already told me, Marcus already told me to stop bullying my guests, so I will stop <laughs> bullying you. <laughs> and also, guys, I'm so sorry if the video is out of sync uh, with Jasmine. It's probably because like. I have like 15 programs running right now on my computer, and even oh, though no. it is a new computer, it is, it is, yep, that fan is, it, it, it's, it's about to catch on fire, so um, we're going to have to wrap this up pretty soon, but um, would you like to answer the question? Last, last chance, Jasmine, would you, uh, would, do you have anything to say about violists? Do you, do you love violists, or do you? I love violists. Oh, here you go. And I love viola jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you love violas and you love viola jokes. Perfect answer. All right, guys, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for watching, and thank, thank you, you, Jasmine, Ray, for, for being me. here. It was a lot of fun. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, and uh, I will see you, you on the next stream. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 <laughs>
Well, I just did a boomer move, but you guys were already gone anyway, so what are you guys doing here? Let's go hang out on Discord. And don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, we'll be looking forward to our next guest, which will be next Wednesday, probably around the same time. So I will be announcing that tomorrow. Uh, be sure to check that out on our Discord and also on our Reddit.